Hello, welcome. In this video today, I am going to be talking about uh, some of the cases that the Spencer Law Firm accepts. Uh, I'm going to give you some tips and information that will help you understand that discrimination because it could be a diff difficult concept at times. Um, I'll also talk about wage and hour, and this will be for employee side and employer side. Just a brief overview. We'll have more detailed uh, videos uh, coming soon. Before I get started on talking about this helpful information to you, uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Deka Spencer. I'm the owner and founder of the Spencer Firm. The Spencer Firm is a law firm that has been around for over 14 years. Uh, during that time, we've been helping people with employment discrimination matters, and we've gotten some great results for some people. And so the point of this video is really to help you understand whether or not you have the type of case that our firm will accept. I know that employment discrimination clients or people with workplace issues, oftentimes something that I hear on the phone is that they've been calling around and calling around different lawyers. And I know that takes time out of your day, it takes energy out of your day also, because you're discussing something that is stressful to you. The majority of, of Americans, um, or people working in America, I should say, spend a great amount of time at work. So it is a very important topic. And so let's jump right into it, okay? So when you are doing a discrimination case, or let's say you are wondering, do I have a case? Do I have a claim? That's why you call these lawyers. Well, let's talk a little bit very briefly about this topic, okay? If you uh, are calling about discrimination, it has to be something typically that is related to race, national origin, it could be sex, gender, which includes pregnancy, sexual orientation, religion, disabilities, some other things such as genetics, and there's also something called retaliation. In summary, it needs to be a discrimination resulting from something sometimes to say they say that you can't change, let's say. Um, generally, I mean, some of the categories are different, you know, we've got pregnancy, but in, in, in general, we're talking about those sorts of things, race, national origin, disabilities. And so when we're saying discrimination, what, what the EEOC and other agencies, local agencies are looking for, and the court and the judges and the lawyers, what everyone's looking for is that you, if there's evidence that you were being treated unfairly or differently, or that there was an impact that was different towards you than others. And when we say you, it still has to be tied to what we said. And let's use race as an example, although that's not the only one. But let's say that because of your race, you are being treated differently. What everyone is looking for and what this firm is looking for is that you're able to show that it is race. Why is it race? Are you the only one of that race there? Are other people of the same race being treated equally to you, meaning not fairly? And the people of another race are being treated better than you. These are things that they look for and actually something that's on their questionnaire uh, at the federal EEOC's questionnaire where they say, um, who's being treated better than you, similar to you, worse than you. Now, if someone is being treated worse than you and they are not of the same race and they are of the race that you are saying is being treated better, well, it sounds obvious that wouldn't be that strong of a case, right? Because then it would mean that you are being treated differently, not because of your race. Because if we can find a coworker that they say is similar to you, meaning has the same duties as you or close to, 
has the same supervisor as you or close to that, uh, really the same supervisor, and the supervisor is treating that person worse than you, then we can't really say that it's because of your race if that person is of a race that you are saying is being treated better. This sounds obvious, but a lot of times when we are in these situations, you need the help of an attorney or someone to bring these facts out. Okay. So one thing you want to ask yourself is one, am I being treated worse than others? Or two, is this new policy or this protocol impacting me adversely, negatively? Me and not just me, but me and people of similar kind to me. It could be other pregnant women, for example. Does this policy affect pregnant women, right? So that's what I want you to think about when you're wondering, do I have a claim, okay? The other thing is that there has to be what they call an adverse, an ad, something adverse, right? It, there needs to be an adverse action that basically say there's a termination or a suspension or something that really substantially affects your ability to do your work. And courts are very serious about this. And, and this is important because you don't want to pay a lot of money for uh, to go to court only to find out that what happened to you is not enough. It's just not enough. Sometimes you don't know but other times you do. And the way we know this is the lawyers, um, you know, there, there's case law that you can see. So it's very important to listen to your lawyer's advice. Um, I would say when they're saying it's time to settle, that's important. Anyway, so this is how you know you may have a discrimination case if you have these factors where it qualifies as a type of case that can be handled by these agencies, EEOC or local administrative agency, and then the court will accept it. Uh, these are, these are mainly title seven claims. Not only there's also section 1981 that governs race discrimination. Uh, and I won't get into the details of that. That can get pretty complex, but just in general, you have a claim or you think you have this claim, and then there's been an adverse action against you. You've been terminated, you've been suspended. Um, just for some examples, you haven't been accommodated. Not being accommodated is creating a hardship on you and you're in jeopardy of losing your job or your performance is declining because you haven't been accommodated. These are examples of the adverse actions. And lastly, damages. You want to make sure that that you can that, or that an attorney can help you quantify what are your damages? How were you harmed by your employer's decision? Well, with a termination, it's pretty easy to see um, you've lost your job. And the damages are assessed by, well, how long do I think it's going to take me to find a job? Or how long did it take me to find a job? A comparable job. Damages is a very long topic. I'll just, I just want to touch the surface of it. And these are the areas that you uh, need to keep in mind when you want to find out, well, do I have a claim? All right. Now with, with employers, because we handle employees and employers with employers, I'll give an example. What we want to do is make sure that you are not in, in at risk of violating one of these laws uh, that are in place. And a very good one to give you an example is accommodations, all right? For example, our firm has a questionnaire and a letter that would go out to the employee asking them uh, questions that relate to reasonable accommodations. So you wanna make sure that you are engaging your employees in the process of accommodating them. And we have forms that automatically do that. You give it to the employee and the employee will fill it out and you are covered in that regard 
uh, at least in the regard of engaging in the process. And then once you get the information, you assess whether or not it's reasonable for you to accommodate this person or if it will create a hardship, okay? And if it creates a hardship, you are not required to accommodate. If it's reasonable, then you should, right? So these are just snippets, some quick tips uh, that I wanted to give you. I am looking forward to creating more videos. Uh, so, you know, look out for more videos of value to you and have a great day.